thank you so much for giving me this opportunity first and uh, like i have been i have been doing this and uh, like sharing my experiences throughout my social media handles to make sure that people uh, feel and believe that qa is a very important part of the culture and uh, the part of the tech industry and uh, i would love to again uh, reiterate those things and share my views with all of you guys so uh, i started my career around 7 months back a uh, 7 years back and uh, when i was starting my career uh, i was not very sure about uh, being a tester and uh, uh, the reason being is ki uh, all of my friends who were uh, studying with me uh, and we all has this fantasy that we have to be a back end dev full stack dev or maybe a front end dev but testing uh, no not that much because we used to feel that uh, people in testing are not doing great work and uh, they are not paid well and uh, we all have this mindsets uh, when we are studying in college or when we are or when we are just graduating or we are when we are just freshers uh but yeah like um, i got placed in wipro and when you get uh, placed in such a big company right uh, especially service based companies you don't get chance to choose what you want to do like uh, later uh, in your career you can do but as a fresher they put you in a batch that uh, that batch will get uh, train in xyz uh, tools and technologies based upon their requirement and you will be placed in such projects where you will be utilizing those uh, trainings which you have done in last 3 or 4 months so i got trained in uh, testing automation testing uh, performance testing and i was uh, placed in a project which was in performance testing so initially for maybe 2 uh, uh, years i was in the zone okay i have got placed and i am getting a fixed salary i don't have much pressure from my family so i'm just enjoying my life but after completing 2 years right when i started looking for jobs again the the same fear started coming in my mind that okay maybe testing is not a great uh, great field or great career option because Uh, i used to see that i am not getting that much uh, calls or that man, that much uh, feedback from hrs when i am applying for jobs and uh, uh, it took me almost 2 uh, 3 months to get my first call and uh, and after that i was giving interviews i maybe i gave more than 10 20 interviews and i was not getting any good opportunities and i was very hopeless and uh, at that time was, i was staying in a pg and uh, in that pg i had a friend who was working in a startup he was a qa himself and uh, i spoke to him uh, he shared some some points some insights from his side and then i got some motivation that it's okay like whatever happened happened i have to now focus on my career so that's that was a trigger point in my career and after that i have done good in my life in my career as well now let's back uh, go back to the question like is qa still a good career option or not so i think uh, i truly feel it's a good career option and uh, and why why so so we know how like uh, ai is uh, like keep coming up from here and there every corner and uh, we do see uh, in in some post or in in some companies that they don't treat qa as that well or maybe they think that qa is not required that much but uh, i will just give you a very basic example so i think uh, two two and a half years back uh, tesla was uh, testing and launching their self driving cars uh, feature for the first time and uh, when they launched this feature right uh, it was uh, it was an ai who was supposed to drive the car but even to make sure that that ai is working fine the car is driving as it's supposed to they hired 50 people who are trained drivers okay and who has experience of driving in all terrains and at the end human like a human uh, or a qa like uh, i would say those drivers are like qa only they were testing and driving those cars even though those cars are supposed to drive by themselves so it's just a basic example the point i'm trying to make here is ki until unless we have companies making products for consumers who are going to be a human we do require qas because we don't have any other way to figure out whether this feature is market fit or whether this product is market fit or not so for for example uh, we have pms uh, who get the requirements who works on the uh, idea ideation part and they work with the design team come up with the designs and then we have devs who write codes and uh, make those designs reality every coder every product manager every designer feel that whatever work they have done that's great and customer would love it they will not have any issues they will not have any problems and everything which they make they feel is product market fit but that is not the reality once you start using the product you figure out they could be 10 number of things so maybe 100 number, number of things which you can do to improve that product to improve that feature to improve that app similarly 
customers can have many pain points and uh, nobody have time to go and listen and work on those pain points so this gap between the product managers devs designers and the consumers is the qa so until and unless we have or we are making products for humans for consumers we do require qas it could be a software qa it could be a hardware qa it could be qa in any field any domain but qa will be required i do feel i do believe that yeah the ratio of qas is not that much high compared to devs and and maybe other domains but uh, if you have qa and if you have some sort of experience you can have uh, like n number of opportunities you can be analyst you can be a, a program manager product manager you can be analyst so uh, if you combine all this along with qa opportunities then you have i think uh, a very uh, good chunk of opportunities out there and uh, another thing which which is a pain point for many people who are starting their career as a qa is that so first thing which i said like everybody as a fresher feels that okay qa is not a great profession or as a career to make good money or to go high up in the ladder but uh, you can take me as an example so i started my career with wipro then i worked and moved uh, with south asia's biggest uh, i think one of, one of the biggest giants uh, in terms of tech industry grab uh, then i have also worked with zeta and uh, now i'm working with coin d6 which is one of the india's biggest uh, crypto company so uh, i think uh, if i can do it anybody can do it you just need to be uh, focusing and learning right things and be confident and uh, just 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 keep trying and and believe in yourself and uh, and yeah coming to the part finance part so uh, like i cannot just go and disclose my salary or or i cannot just go and give you quota number but uh, i can assure you that if you are a good qa you can earn as good as a dev and uh, and if you have expertise in in some other uh, like other domains apart from your testing part which could be automation it could be product management it could be maybe a being a scrum master and if you combine this with your testing knowledge then then i think you can even earn better than a better than a developer or maybe any other profession so yeah i would again uh, like reiterate like uh, i do believe uh, that qa is a good career option and people who start their career of freshers or who have just graduated or who have just around one or two years of experience don't listen to your friends because not everybody can be a dev i would i would be a excellent qa rather than being a bad uh, dev because if i'm not able to uh, cope up or if i'm not able to perform as i am supposed to being any other profession i would love to be and choose that profession which i like which i enjoy uh, which which makes me feel good and uh, which which i like to do like i don't feel pressure like i just uh, enjoy doing that so i would any day choose becoming a qa so so that's that's how uh, i think that's how that's what that's what i believe and uh, i have been uh, sharing the same thought process and sharing my experiences throughout my career because i do feel that people are uh, not that much happy like they believe or they think that a qa is some maybe second class job like uh, um, i have i have spoken to maybe 30 40 people in last 2 3 months over quora or linkedin or youtube who feels that qa means you don't have any career going forward uh, and a couple of things i want to add uh, here in the last is ki when you start your career right uh, you are not very sure what you have to do or what good like what will be good for you so whether you are starting your career as a dev or as a qa don't rush don't uh, don't uh, take decisions uh, Uh, when you are not hundred percent sure about it, give some time to yourself, and with time you will realize uh, uh, that uh, what suits you, what is good for you. It could be a dev role, it could be a PM role, it could be a analyst role, it could be a QA role. But give some time as time to yourself. Like uh, for me, it took me almost three years to realize whether I has to be in this profession or not, whether I has to carry, uh, like continue this profession or not. But now I am very content with my life. I am very happy with my life, and I am doing really great in my career. so give some time to yourself and uh, and everybody knows uh, their negatives and their positives so if you feel that you are really good at coding and uh, if you are really uh, good at some other skills and and being a dev something is uh, which you are really thrive for then maybe go for it but if you feel that okay like i am not that much great in coding but i know how to code i know how to analyze things if you have that mindset then i think being a qa is very good for you and uh, another question which i want to answer is that people uh, like ask a lot of time that whether it's good to be a manual qa or, or or automation qa so see at a at a beginner level at a fresher everybody starts their career as a manual qa only because you first have to understand the product understand the feature 
write test cases, uh, like uh, plan your scenarios, and maybe be, uh, do your test planning. And then only you can go and start the automation. So first step is always being a very good, very proficient in manual testing. And once you are a feature or your product is stable and you are very good at your skills, your core skills, then only you can use your coding skills and you can automate those steps, those features. So everybody has to start their career as a manual QA. And as you grow, right, like as your experience grow, that if you have around four or five years of experience, you can uh, you can easily crack interviews. You can easily get uh, very good QA jobs and you can easily make good money for sure. But as you start growing your experience beyond five years, beyond six years, beyond seven years, people will start expecting a lot from you, not only manual QA part. Either you should be good in automation or you should be uh, in uh, doing uh, analyst part or maybe doing the management part because after four or five years of experience, you just can't rely on your manual, ex manual experience. So uh, this question is very, very much asked to me, like whether I should stick to manual QA or I should go to automation QA. So if you want to start your career, manual QA is, is your go-to thing and uh, you can do really good. Uh, just master it, go into the core, learn whatever you can learn from your side. And once you feel that you have done good in the manual part, start adding uh, more skills to your feather. It could be automation. It could be anything else, as I said earlier, because after five years of experience, right? It will be difficult for you to switch companies and get good salaries if you're just sticking to manual part. For example, uh, if I take my example, uh, till five, six years of experience, I was doing great in my career. I'm still doing great in my career. But then I realized, okay, I have to add something in my uh, in my bucket to get more number of calls or maybe to get more number of knowledge. And that's why I, I decided like, okay, I'll go to the management role and I'll start looking there. Maybe I'll, I'll brush up automation and learn more about automation. And if you have all this knowledge, right, then um, like you have enormous opportunities and uh, yeah, that's what I feel. And uh, anybody who is listening this uh, and has been part of this call, who has even 1% of doubt, like they have this confidence or they have this feeling that they are good QAs and they can really, uh, they can really uh, do good for the community, for the tech community, then trust yourself, be confident. Don't listen to your friends or your fellow uh, colleagues who feel that or who pushes you on the boundary that's saying that, okay, why you're doing and uh, being a QA, you can maybe go to some other profession or maybe some other domain. Stick to it. Uh, keep practicing. Uh, it could be automation. It could be manual. It could be uh, uh, the management part, whatever you are good at it. Stick with it and you will have a very good career for sure. And uh, I have been, uh, as I said earlier, I have been very active and uh, I have been talking about all these things throughout my career. And if you guys want to talk to me and reach out to me, so I am available on LinkedIn, Quora. I have a very small YouTube channel where I make videos whenever I get time. And I also have a TopMate account. So if you guys want to have a one-to-one -one call with me, you can schedule a call with me using TopMate. So uh, I would love to talk to like all of you guys. Maybe we don't have that much time so that I can talk to each one of you. But I would love to. And and yeah, that's it uh, from my side. Uh, so all the best. And I think uh, QA Touch is doing a very great job. And I think if you join all the sessions, you will definitely get the confidence that, okay, this is a very good opportunity. And going forward, you will have a very good career. Mm -hmm.